present Arthur Lowe, John LeMessurier and Clive Dunn in Dad's Army. <laughs> Time on my hands, featuring John Lorry, Arnold Ridley and Ian Lavender, with this week's guests Bill Pertwee, Frank Williams, Larry Martin, Eric Chitty and Fraser Carr. <laughs> Here is the news and this is John Snag reading it. The war still rages throughout Europe and Britain continues to be a target for Hitler's aerial attacks. Thankfully, however, in England, even in these troubled times, there are certain long-established traditions that make life still worth living. For instance, morning coffee at the Marigold Tea Rooms at Warmington-on-Sea. Hello, Wilson. I look forward to my morning coffee and biscuits. It's an oasis in this turmoil of strife sitting here in the marigold tea rooms in this typical English setting. One wouldn't know there was a war on. Yes, I know what you mean, sir. In fact, I feel so relaxed, I, I might even unbuckle my revolver holster. <laughs> well, I'm surprised that you bring that great big gun out with you at all. I mean, especially when we're not even in uniform. <laughs> great big gun? Really, well, you talk like some Nancy boy. <laughs> I have you know that this thirty-eight revolver hasn't been out of my reach day or night since I was issued with it. I take it everywhere with me. Everywhere. How terribly inconvenient. <laughs> it must get awfully wet when you're taking a bath. <laughs> it's just the sort of flippant remark I'd expect from you. But I'll tell you one thing. You'd laugh on the other side of your face if that shop bell tinkled and a Nazi paratrooper came in. What would you say then, hmm? I'll just run over to the bank and get my rifle. Oh. <laughs> Mary, sir. Anyway, it's extremely unlikely that a Nazi paratrooper would come into the marigold tea room. Oh, oh my God. Miss Manreen, get over there straight away. Here's your rifle, Uncle Arthur. Come on, come on. Just back. a minute, just a, just a minute. <laughs> what are you talking about? No, a German pilot's bailed out and landed on the town hall roof. Good heavens. <laughs> Must get over there at once. Pike, go back to the bank. Yes, sir. Tell Miss Smithers that she is in charge for the time being, and then join me at the town hall. Right, Mr. Manning. Right. right. Tell Miss Smithers she's in charge of the bank. Right. Hello, Pikey. Hello, Mr. Jones. Class up. No, neither can I, Pikey. Mr. Manning, Mr. Manning, there's a Nazi dangling from the town hall clock. He's dangling, sir. He's dangling. Yes, yes, we know, we know, we know. We're going over there now. Come on, Wilson. All right, sir. I'll go back to my shop and I'll get my rifle and bayonet, sir. If he stops dangling and comes down, I want to be ready for him, sir. They don't lock it up him. They don't oh, lock it up him, sir. All, all right, right, all right, Jones, all right. By the way, sir, as I was on my way here to frequent you with the news, I met Miss Rogers, the chief warden, who was going the other way. That greengrocer? What did he want? He said there's no need for us to bother. He was on his way over to the town hall to take charge of everything. Oh, no, no, no. Oh, no. He's quite the wrong man in this sort of situation. Needs someone like me who can make important decisions and has the ability to organize men. Now, let's see. Ah, yes. Wilson. Yes, sir? You pay for the coffee and biscuits and then catch me up. <laughs> all right, all right. Stand back there. This isn't a sideshow. Come on now. Do as you're told. I'm the chief warden and I'm taking charge of the situation. I would have thought it was a military matter. If you ask me, Mr. Mannering should deal with it. Well, nobody is asking you, so be quiet. Will you stand back? There's nothing to see. It's only a German hanging from a parachute. Hilfer! Hilfer! Yeah, all right, mate, we know. Will you stand back there? If those parachute ropes break, he'll, he'll drop right on top of us, and it'll be a very nasty mess. Oh, those ropes won't break. Them Germans make very good ropes, them Germans do. Yeah, all right. Now, if you just stand back, Mr. Uh, whatever you... Parsons, Henry Parsons. They make a lot of other things as well, them Germans. They make uh, binoculars and cameras and telescopes and bicycles and air guns. Yeah, very interesting. Now, if you just move over there and get off out of it... And now, come on. Now. sewing machines. Make very good sewing machines, them Germans. Oh, shut up, you silly old fool! Make way there, make way. Ah, here comes Mr. Manry. Look, everybody, here come our brave lads. Give them a cheer. Hey! Right, let us through, please. Just a minute, Napoleon. Who do you think you're shoving? This is an ARP matter, and I'm in charge here. Now, look here, Hodges. I don't want to discuss anything with you at any time. Now, Wilson, I think we'd better... Look, just a minute, just a minute. I've got a position in this town, and I will not have it undermined. 
This white helmet means something, you know. Yes, it means you're very boring. Now, just get out of the way. <laughs> Look, Mr. Manning, up there on the clock. There he is, like I said. He's dangling, sir. He's dangling, sir. Hilfer! Hilfer! His parachute cords look as if they're caught up on the minute hand. How are we going to get him down, sir? Mr. Manreen, I'd like to make a suggestion, please. Yes, what is it, Pike? Well, if you look at the clock, Mr. Manreen, you'll see it's now five to eleven. Yes, what about it? Well, if we wait till half past, he'll probably just drop off. (laughs) You stupid boy. (laughs) Mind you, sir, Pike's got something there, I think. He'll slide further down every minute after quarter past two, unless you want a, a German pilot making a nasty mess in the street. I mean, uh, we ought to get him down quickly. Yes, yes, you're quite right, Wilson. Well, come on, Napoleon. Don't just stand there. Do something. I'm thinking. God, blimey, you've never thought before. Why start now? Oh, be quiet. <laughs> we'll have to be careful. Wilson, uh, for all we know, that Nazi may be armed. Oh, I don't think he's in any position to give us much trouble, Captain Oh, Mark. don't you believe it, Fraser. A wounded jackal is always the most dangerous when he's cornered. Mm. Now, we need to find out how to get up to the clock tower. There's an inquiry desk just inside the town hall, sir. I expect they'd know. Oh, good idea, Wilson. For me to speak, sir. Yes. Well, we'll say, in my experience, those young ladies at the inquiry desk are not at all helpful, you know, sir. They're very haughty, they are, sir. Everybody has to have an appointment, you see. Without an appointment, you won't be able to see anybody. Oh, don't be absurd. This is an emergency. Oh, I don't think that would make any difference to them, sir. Very, very haughty they are, sir. Treat you with a terrific lot of hot. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, Captain Mannering. I think I may be able to help you. Really? Who are you? Parsons. Henry Parsons. I work at the town hall. Part-time, that is. It's my job to wind the clock. Twice a year. <laughs> Blimey. You can't get more part-time than that. <laughs> Right, lead on, Mr. Part-Time. Oh, Good, Parsons. I'm... I'll come with you. Oh, no, you don't, Hodges. You stay right where you are. Oh, really? That man's got no respect whatsoever for my white helmet. Here we are, Captain Mannering. Now, this is the door into the clock tower, but I'm afraid it's not going to be easy getting up to the clock. How do you mean? What? Do you not remember, Captain Mannering? The staircase was burned down by a firebomb a couple of months ago. Yes, that's right. I haven't had to go up there since then. Well, let's have a look anyway. I see what Mr. Parsons means, sir. They've rigged up some scaffolding and builders' ladders as a temporary measure, but it doesn't look at all safe. Well, we'll manage somehow. Now, let's see. Oh, hello, Mr. Jones. Uh, what's happened? Hello, Mr. Godfrey. Where have you been? I was in Timothy White's when I heard the commotion. <laughs> Captain Manry, can I be of any assistance, sir? I doubt it, Godfrey. <laughs> Whatever have you got there, Mr. Godfrey? Oh, it's my sister's rubber air cushion. I didn't have it repaired. Can't you shop making you carry it through the streets like that, all uncovered? It's a disgrace. They, they never wrap things nowadays. I, I suppose it's the war. I'm afraid all the old standards are going by the board. Oh, you're right there, Mr. Godfrey. They could have put a bit of paper around it, couldn't they? Jones. It? It's very ingrained of you to carry through the street like that, all uncovered. <laughs> when, when I say all uncovered, I'm talking about the air cushion, of course. Not you, Mr. J- Godfrey. Jones, <laughs> Jones, Jones, Jones. <laughs> May I remind you, there's a German dangling from the town hall clock. We've got to get up these ladders. Why well, bother to go up at all? What do you mean? Well, why don't we put Mr. Godfrey's air cushion on the pavement below the tower? And that might break his fall. <laughs> One more remark like that from you, Walker, and I shall order you to leave the town hall. Now, there's nothing else for it. This is the only way we can get up to the clock, and we'll have to be very careful because the whole lot wobbles. Captain Manning, I would like to volunteer to be the first one to shin up those ladders and be the very careful because the whole lot wobbles. <laughs> Let me go, sir. Let me be first, sir. Perhaps Frank ought to go up first, sir. I mean, he's the lightest. Oh, that's not fair, Uncle Arthur. You know I can't stand heights. I'm a martyr to vertigo. I shall go up first, and that's that. Good. <laughs> Sorry, Mr. Manry, I'm sorry, you're too late. I've already uplifted myself. Anyway, it's not right that you should sacrifice yourself when there are people like me about who are more disposable. Well, be very careful, Jones. If you slip, it could be fatal. You know, Wilson, I have to hand it to Jones. That man's, that man's heart is in the right place. It is at the moment, yes. <laughs> not at the top yet. 
Hilfe! Hilfe! We're coming, we're coming! Schnell, schnell! Never mind about the smell, now this is... <laughs> Now there is nothing to worry about. Nothing. You have got another 25 minutes before you drop off. <laughs> Come on, Wilson. We're always there. Did you hear that, Fritz? They're all coming to give you a hand. We'll get you in. In the meantime, don't go away. <laughs> Jones, where are you? I'm over this side, sir. Right, we're coming. The German's still on the clock, Mr. Manning. What are we going to do? You keep him covered and I'll parley with him. Right, sir. Now, pay attention, Fritz. The captain will now parley with you. Thank you, Jones. Out of here. Further resistance is useless. <laughs> In the name of the king, I call on you to surrender. Is the German still there, sir? Well, of course he is. Do you think I'm talking to myself? <laughs> Honestly, Wilson, if this is a specimen of a cracked Luftwaffe pilot, I don't think much of him. I mean, look at him. He's hanging there. <laughs> It's like something the cat dragged in. <laughs> Not smart, like our own brave RAF lads. Well, I wonder how you'd feel if you were dangling 150 feet above the ground. I don't want any of that sort of talk, Wilson. Man's in a blue funk. <laughs> Goodness sake, pull yourself together. Help me, bitch. Pull yourself together. Help me, bitch. Oh, really? <laughs> doesn't even speak English. What's the German for pulling yourself together? I've really no idea, sir. The man looks in a terrible state, sir. Anyway, yeah. I know you, you can't help feeling sorry for the pair, buddy. Yeah, he looks about all in. Look, sir, it's nearly uh, five past. How are we going to get him off the clock and onto this parapet? What we need is some sort of long pole. Here, I'll tell you what, Mr. Mannering, why don't we pull the hour end off the clock? We should be able to reach him with that. That's a good idea, Walker. See if you can reach it. Right. Lend a hand, Jones. Right there, Mr. Bannon. Oh, goodness me, that was quite a climb, especially as I'm not as young as I was. Here, yeah, just a minute. What are those men doing to my clock? Nothing to worry about, Mr. Parsons. Just going to take the R hand off. Take the R hand? That's vandalism, Mr. Mannering. You can't desecrate the town hall clock like that. People won't know what time of day it is. Oh, I'm sorry about that. This is war. But that clock's a superb piece of workmanship. It's German, that is. They make very good clocks, them Germans. You sure it's German? Aye, oh, he's right, sir. It's just here in this wee brass plate. Uh, made by Hermann Holst, Munich. That settles it. Get that hand off, Jones. <laughs> We're trying to pull it, sir, but he doesn't want to come. Oh, oh, I think it's been made too well, sir. By the Germans? Rubbish. <laughs> Try harder. Hello, Uncle Arthur. What's going on? Well, where have you been, Frank? Well, I had to come up slowly, oh. Uncle Arthur, because the ladder wasn't half wobbly. It's no good, Mr. Mannering. We can't get the hand off. I'll tell you what. If I climb out on the other side of the parapet, like this, perhaps if I lean out, I might be able to reach him. Hilfe! Hilfe! Well, hang on, mate. I'm doing my best. Can he not lean further than that, son? Oh, blimey, I'm not a flipping giraffe, you know. <laughs> if he could swing himself a bit towards me, I, I might be able to grab him. Yes, that's it. Wilson, what, what's the German for swing? I've really no idea, sir. You know, Wilson, you, you're just about as much use as a dying duck in a thunderstorm. <laughs> yeah, Fritz, Fritz, swing it. Swing it. You know, hot cha-cha. Try him with a bit of in the mood, Joe. He might understand that. Yeah, OK. Uh... Mr. What you call it, what you do it tonight. Come on, buddy. Well, well about the corner with the table for two. Where's well, the music bell in the day? Hey, Mr. Manning. Yeah. Mr. Manning. What is it, Frank? Look. Look, the German's crying. <laughs> I'm not surprised with that terrible row. Oh. Man's a complete fool. Doesn't seem to understand anything. Perhaps he prefers classical music, sir. Oh, well, uh, no. we could try something German. We're very good music, them Germans. Ha, 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 but Offenbach, the tales of Hoffman, eh? Yes, 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 yes. The Barcarolla has got a lovely swing. Oh, 
Mr. Manning and I found a pole, but it is tied to the scaffolding. Yes, not now, Jones. Now, look, I refuse to allow my platoon to sing a German song. I only need to cut through a piece of rope and a pole will come free. Touch me quiet, Jonesy. Look, Mr. Browning, we've got to get the German in somehow. Anything's worth a try. Here, a real lady boys, come on. One, a two, a... La, 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 la. Well, he always tells us to use our initiative. I think I'll just get on and cut it. Just a minute. Stop, stop singing. Stop singing, everybody. What's that noise? It's only me, sir. Oh, I'm cutting through this rope so I can get this pole out. I'm nearly there. No, Jules. No, you mustn't. It's all right, sir. It's coming. Jones, don't! The whole lot will fall down it! What did you say, sir? <laughs> Doesn't matter now. Too late. We'll never get down. <laughs> Or maroon. <laughs> maroon. Go oh, be quiet, Fraser. You see, sir, I was not cognizant to the fact that this pole had things attached to it. Uh, it's all right, Jersey, all right, all right. It, it could happen to anyone. Oh, especially him. <laughs> I want to make it up to you, Mr. Manning. Whatever you ask me to do, sir, I will do no matter how dangerous. I will make any sacrifice necessary in order to regurgitate myself. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, John. Hilfa! Oh. Hilfa! Oh, Wilson, well, I'm fed up with that Nazi dangling there, whining Hilfa. Well, I, I'm sure he'd agree with you, sir, but especially as it's almost quarter past. Quarter past? Yes. Great Scott. Right, let's go and get him in. We'll worry about how we get down later. Corporal Jones, walk up. Bring that pole over here. Who are Mr. Manry? Excuse me, Mr. Manry. I can see Mr. Hodges down in the street below. I think he's trying to shout up to us, but I can't hear what he's saying because it's too far. What shall I do? Oh, yeah, yeah. Shout down to him and tell him you can't hear him. Yes, all right, Mr. Manry. Mr. Manry? Yeah. If I can't hear him, he won't be able to hear me. <laughs> oh. You need a megaphone, that's what you need. Germans make very good megaphones. Eh? Yes, all right, all right. Thank you, Mr. Parsons. Now, walk lower that pole. And they make radios and gramophones as well. For it's heaven's really sake, shut up! <laughs> so don't you forget what I've said, Manring. I've had just about enough of you. I hope you stay at the top of that clock tower forever. Then I can enjoy the war in peace. <laughs> because I do enjoy this war. In fact, I've never enjoyed anything so much in all my life as being Chief Warden. I love it! <laughs> war was spoiling for me! And don't try to shout back to me because it's too far and I won't be able to hear you! <laughs> Hello, Mr. Hodges. The German's still up there then? Yes, that's right, Vicar. I thought he might have fallen off by now. No, not yet. You haven't missed anything. Oh, good. <laughs> Oh, look, Mr. Hodges, I think they're pulling him in. Yeah, I think you're right. Right, come on now. All pull together. Oh. 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 Careful, Mr. Money, you're going to break the man's leg. Oh, I can't help that. He shouldn't have come in the first place. <laughs> oh. 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 oh, got him, sir. Well now, Walker. Oh, oh danke schön, mein Herr, danke schön. Oh, don't start all that foreign rubbish. We won't actually be able to get him over the parapet until we've released him from his parachute. Good point, Wilson. How do we do that? We well, see that big buckle on his tummy, Mr. Manreen. Well, you give it a quarter turn to the left and then hit it. I saw it in the film one of our aircraft is missing. <laughs> Mr. Speaker? Yes, sir? I'd like to volunteer to give the German a quarter turn and then hit him. <laughs> let me do it, sir. Let me do it, please, sir. Oh, very well. Right, now, quarter turn to the left. Right. That's it. And now... Oh! It hasn't opened, sir. Try it again, Jonesy. Yes, all right, sir. Oh! <laughs> it still won't open. You must have got it wrong, Pike. Actually, sir, I, I just thought a quarter turn to the left uh, would be on British parachutes. On the continent, they use a left-hand thread. 
Oh, yes, yes, that's typically foreign. <laughs> all right, Jones, try turning it to the right. Yeah, all right, Mr. Manrid. I did it a bit harder this time, Jonesy. With pleasure. Oh, no, 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 no. Here, here, look, Vicar. They're in the poor devil. Where? I can't see. There, right across the gargoyles. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not in the Geneva Convention. No, but it's very near it. <laughs> Oh, good morning, Mr. Godfrey. This is very exciting, isn't it? Mr. Hodges told you Captain Manring and the rest of them are, are marooned up there at the top of the tower. You see, all the ladders fell down. Yeah, they were knocked down, you mean? Ruddy hooligans? Oh, sorry, Vic. Oh, don't worry, Mr. Hodges. Now, how are we going to get them down? I'm sorry, Vicar. I don't want anything to do with it. I don't even want to discuss it. Oh, dear. Oh, now, don't worry, Mr. Godfrey. I think I know how to get them down. Oh, good, uh... How do we do it? By exercising a little skill I have. I'll just pop back to the vicarage and pick up my accoutrements. I won't be long. You wait here. Right, come on, man. Pull him over the parapet. Right, sir. Oh, danke. Mein Herr, danke, danke, sir. He's ever so grateful, isn't he, Mr. Manry? I think he wants to kiss you, sir. What? Oh, no, no. Any of those foreign tricks here? Jones, take the prisoner over in the corner and keep him covered. Yes, right, oh, Mr. Manning. Come on, Fred. Uh, Handy hop. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, now we've rescued the Germans, sir, I really think we ought to try and work out how we are going to get down. Oh, don't worry, Wilson. I've never let you down yet, have I? Well, there uh, have been. Yes, uh, all right, all right, all right. Yeah. Time now to discuss the odd occasion. <coughs> now, I've written a note here, and I'm going to throw it down to the people on the ground. But that won't go straight down, sir. You see, it will flutter for miles. What? It will flutter, you see. Oh, oh, yes. Just testing you, Wilson. <laughs> Miss Manreen, can you give me the note? I've got an idea. Well done, Pike. Here you are. Here, what are you going to do? Well, there's a couple of empty bottles here. I'll chuck it down in one of these. Oh, I'm not sure that that's a good Here idea. goes. <laughs> hey, blimey, look out, everybody. They're chucking things at us. <laughs> Madman! That could have killed me! <laughs> look, Mr. Hodges, uh, there's a message in it. Is there? Right, let's have a look. Right. Well, I'm going to send them a message back. Where's that chalk? Uh, what are you going to do? I'm going to write it on the road in big letters. Just watch this. Oh, oh, don't say anything you regret afterwards. <laughs> really, Pike? You could have killed someone with that bottle. I was only using my initiative. Oh, look, sir. Hodges is chalking a reply on the road. What was uh, what was your message, Commandant? How are we going to get down? What's his solution? Why don't you jump? <laughs> Man's an idiot. I think I'll throw the other bottle down. What message is in that one, Pike? Oh, no message. I'm just trying to hit Mr. Hodges. Good. good. <laughs> Hey, Mr. Manning, uh, why not have each one of us in turn suggest a way to get down and then you can pick out the best, eh? Yes. Well, I suppose we might as well try it. Better than nothing. Yes, Pike? If we could unhook the parachute off the big hand of the clock, one of us could float down on it. Oh, don't be ridiculous. <laughs> Mr. Spector, if we can unhook the parachute like Pikey says, we could cut it into shreds and then we could plait it and plait it and keep on plaiting it until we have one long rope and then we could take it in turns to slide down it. <laughs> you sniggering at, Wilson? I just think so. that's a bit of a platitude. <laughs> I don't understand. <clears throat> anyway, let's hear what you've got to offer. All right, sir. Well, <clears throat> I, uh, <laughs> I can't help remembering... A fairy story my dear old nanny used to tell me. Oh. It was all about a beautiful princess who was trapped at the top of a high tower, just like us, and she was rescued by a handsome prince. Mm. Can't say I've seen many princes around Warmington lately. <laughs> anyway, do you know how he uh, <coughs> got her down? But telling her stupid stories like this, I shouldn't have wondered. Oh, no, no, no. <laughs> no, I mean, how he got her down from the top of the tower. I have no idea. What is he... The, the prince shot an arrow up to the top, and attached to the arrow was a length of silken thread. 
and attached to the thread was a piece of twine, and attached to the twine was a rope. Go on. You see? And, well, the princess pulled them all up, and then the handsome prince climbed up and rescued her. There. It was all nice, wasn't it? <laughs> you like that? I don't think I can stand much more of this. <laughs> Like having a bad dream. Mr. Marley, I mind the time many, many years ago in the furtherest part of the Western Isles. It was a wild and lonely spot, you understand. <laughs> As it so happens, two brave lighthouse keepers were marooned. Stairs had collapsed and they were cut off. They were stuck up at the top there for two long months. And at the end, they decided that there was only one way to get down. What was that? To dismantle the lighthouse brick by brick. <laughs> it's not a very sensible suggestion, Fraser. <laughs> oh, maybe no. But you see, they'd been up there so long, they were quite mad. <laughs> Did you hear what I said, Captain Marling? Mad, mad, mad! <laughs> well, man, I can't say that I've been exactly bowled over by the brilliance of your ideas. Especially yours, Wilson. I'm sorry, sir. <laughs> I mean, a bow and arrow. Hmm? <laughs> Length of twine. Most stupid suggestion of the lot. <laughs> what is that? It's an arrow, Mr. Manreen. Look, it stuck itself in that beam just behind you. Good heavens. I think the vicar fired it from down below. The, there's a message on it, sir. What does it say, Mr. Watson? Just a minute, just a minute. Attached to this arrow is a length of twine. <laughs> Attached to the twine is a length of cord. <laughs> Attached to the cord. Oh, well, well, well. It's quite, quite a coincidence, isn't it? Yes, always. <laughs> you start pulling up the twine. And I'll work out a suitable order for us to be taken down from here. Huh? Naturally, I shall go first. Naturally, sir? Yes. yes. And you can go last. <laughs> now, let's see. That leaves Jones, Fraser, Walker, Pike, German fellow. Oh, Mr. Parsons. It's funny. I wonder where he's got to. Walker, have you, have you seen Mr. Parsons lately? No, sir. No, no. I can't say I have. I saw him about five minutes ago, Mr. Manreen. He was saying something about the German having damaged the clock face. I think he went to have a closer look. Mm. Help! Help! <laughs> what was that? Help! Look, sir. I'm in onto the big hand of the clock. Wait, bless my soul. It's Mr. Parsons. What's he doing there? What are you doing, Mr. Parsons? I leant over the parapet to check on my Roman seven, and I slipped, and now I can't get back. Oh, really? But the time, Mr. Man, it's five to twelve. It's slide off that big end at half past. Oh, no, not again. <laughs> Jones, walk up, bring that pole right, over here. Right, sir, right, sir. Hang on, Mr. Parsons. Yeah. Come on, Pike Fraser. Oh, Let the hand. In that episode of Dad's Army, based on the original television series by Jimmy Perry and David Croft, you heard Arthur Lowe as Captain Mannering, John LeMessurier as Sergeant Wilson, Clive Dunn, Corporal Jones, John Laurie, Private Fraser, Arnold Ridley, Private Godfrey, Ian Lavender, Private Pike, Bill Pertwee, Chief Warden Hodges, Frank Williams, the Vicar, Larry Martin, Private Walker, Eric Chetty, Mr. Parsons, and Fraser Carr as the German pilot. Time on My Hands was adapted for radio by Harold Snowd and Michael Knowles and produced by John Dias. <laughs>